nine to five work, buy stuff that breaks down, buy more stuff that breaks down, you know what I mean? Pay your taxes and die. You know, that's what the world's given us, but we're talking about the kingdom of God. The word tells us, and we're going to see it tonight, and we're going to begin to talk about a topic called revelatory knowledge. Mm. Revelation knowledge. Hallelujah. The word tells us that God has predestined these awesome things for us. And the only reason that we don't walk into them and we don't fulfill them, I'm going to tell you guys, it's don't think that everything that happens is God's will. I don't believe that. Last week we learned, remember this, it said that uh, if you truly love me, you'd obey my commands. You remember that when Jesus said that? Mm-hmm. And we broke that down that the word command, mitzvah, means you would obey my direction. Right, right, right. When we obey the word of God and we obey it, we are, what's happening is it's like looking at a map and Jesus is directing us to these awesome preordained oh, yeah. blessings in ministries and businesses and in, in movies and books and these things that he placed in us that's in our spirit. And he's trying to direct us by his words. He says, if you would just apply my direction, if you would listen to me and you do as I say, if you follow me, all that that I birthed in you and is in your spirit, I'm going to show you how to get it out and fulfill it in your purpose, in life, and what I called you to do before you were even born. While you were still yet in your mother's womb, the word says that God knew you. And he also knows what he has for you. But who also knows that just like a son or a daughter, I don't have, I didn't, growing up when I was like 12, I didn't have to listen to my mom. You didn't have to listen to your dad. It's a thing called rebellion. God can have our best interest in mind and want to be leading us to awesome, wonderful things in our lives. Wives, families, ministries, friends. I mean, divine appointments, good friends, leading you into prosperity, health, the connections to connect you with the things that are going to help fulfill his plan and his purpose for your life. You know, the Lord says, he says that I know the plans that I have for thee. That means he has plans for thee. And he says that my plans are not to harm you, but to bring you success yes. and to prosper you. If we believe that, then we could trust this God. And that's another problem, trusting God. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I've had a hard time trusting God. I still sometimes, when I feel like the Lord leading me to do something that's going to take some faith and step out there, like rent the dome. (laughs) This is kind of like, like, how am I going to do that, Lord? I can't afford to rent the dome, you know? But stepping out in their faith, sometimes it's hard for me to trust God to step out there in faith and do things that he's asking me to do. But I'm going to tell you, it's been getting easier and easier because the more that God just keeps loving on me and blessing me and proving himself and following through and following through on everything that he promises to follow through in my life, and now it's getting to the point that how can I not trust him? How how did I waste so many years and so much time in my life not trusting him? Running around, getting in trouble, building things, my own little empires that came up and fell and crashed and broke and all this yes. stuff and trying to get my own prosperity and trying to, you know, make relationships work on my own. Instead of surrendering and saying, Father God, you know everything that I need and you have it and you can bring it to me. You've even predestined it for me. I surrender, Father God, and I allow you to lead me. I will obey your commands. I will obey your directives. And Father, lead me in to all that you have for me. And believing this, that he can do more for me And bless me in ways, knowing me more intricately as my creator than I even know myself. He knows perfectly how to satisfy me. And he has, and he does. Hallelujah. Mm. Above and beyond anything you could ever even need, want, imagine, or ask. That's God telling you that I want to bless your life and fulfill you even more than any way that you could imagine for yourself. And I've preached that before. I said, you know, you thinking that the best life would be a yacht and maybe some money or being like, you know, being able to be a movie star or be a rock star or be like a pro basketball player or, you know, whatever you think the best life is. God's saying, uh-uh. uh-uh. I could top that. I could fulfill you in ways that you didn't even know there were ways. <laughs> I know you deeper than you know yourself. Hallelujah. While you were still yet in your mother's womb, I know every hair on your head, your days are numbered. I know the plans that I have for thee. And I've, I've intricately planned out a life and a blessing and a mission and a purpose that is going to bring you complete, total completeness, fullness, and satisfaction in me. 
in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, I just pray that you remove the obstacles, Father God, whatever they are, be it fear, be it doubt, be it unbelief, be it jobs, be it bad relations, be it whatever it is, Father God, that is coming between us and fulfilling the purpose that you have for our lives. Father, I ask even now, Father, to move it out of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, like King David said, remove the obstacles from thy path. Yes, and Father, we ask that in faith. Yes, Not only hoping you have, Father, but knowing that you did and it's done. On the cross, it is finished. And church, walk freely with no obstacles from this day forward. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Looking on to Jesus, sorry, the author and finisher of our faith. How about that? The author and the finisher, didn't say of our lives. The author and the finisher of our faith. I don't know about you, church family, but from the day that I cried out as a heroin addict on, the, on my mother's couch almost a decade ago, and I cried out and I said, Jesus, please help me, and I got born again by the Spirit of God, from that day forth, I've lived not just my own life, but I've lived by faith. I've been living, my, my life is in my faith in God. And he is the author and the finisher now of my faith. I used to be the author and the finisher of my life. I decided what to do. I decided where to go. I decided how to spend my money. I made all the decisions for myself. And I'm going to tell you, church, I can't speak for everybody in here, but I got myself all messed up into a mess. Okay? I don't do that anymore. Today, I've learned to yield myself to God and say, Father God, you're now the author and the finisher of the remainder of my life. What is it that you would have me do? You know, I don't write $47 tithes because I feel like writing $47 tithes. That was a discipline because I believe that the Bible says, test me in this and see if, if you write out, four, if you tithe everything that I give you, if I will not bring on to you and, and multiply you with an abundance that you won't even have room for. And, and I started doing that in faith just because the Bible said I began to obey his word and been doing that for seven years. And I went from sleeping in parks on the west side of Chicago to you know, a six-bedroom house. You know, uh, I'm just blessed. I'm blessed. I'm so blessed. Amen. Glory. Amen. When we apply and we obey His commands, a lot of people say to me, you know, Scott, I prayed, I did this. God ain't doing nothing for me. There's a prerequisite, church. He says, abide in me. If I abide in you and you abide in me, then ye shall ask anything that you want, and it shall be granted unto you. I guarantee you, everybody that I know that tells me that they asked God and God didn't do nothing, they weren't abiding in Him. They weren't making their life, they weren't sold out 100% to Jesus, making their home in Christ and allowing Christ to make His home in them. So if you truly love me, you obey my directive. This right here, Church Valley, this is the map. This is the map to your blessing. This is your map to your preordained destiny. And you have to get in it and you got to follow the directions. As James says, he says, don't be like a man who's just a mere hearer of God's word. He says, don't be like the guy who reads his word and he hears it. But then he closes it. It's like a mirror. He looks in it and he sees himself. And he can see the blemishes. He can see the stuff that needs to be fixed, right? He can see if his hair is messed up or if he needs to, uh, you know, brush his teeth. He can see all that stuff in this mirror. The, the word is like a mirror. You see yourself in it. But instead of him correcting those things and allowing God to get him right, it says don't be like a man, like a mere hearer of the word. He looks into the word and then closes it up and walks away and forget it. immediately forgets what he looked like. He says, but be a doer of my word. That's it. That's it. Be a doer of my word. Hallelujah. Who knows, church, that's why we're trying to do the Angel Food Ministries. That's why we're doing the Bowers Foundation. That's why we're building a well in Africa. Because we want to do what God's Word tells us to do. We want to love unfaithed. We want to advance the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And trust God to provide our needs in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. 